Italy is going back into lockdown this Easter as it struggles to contain the third wave of COVID-19. Rome also slapped the restriction on Sardinia despite it being the only Italian region to manage the virus. It was briefly a COVID-wide safe area in Italy's color alert system, partially due to its insularity, its small population and a thorough screening campaign. Sardinia managed to be a COVID-wide zone for three weeks. It's been good for us. We could finally move around the region freely. Living in a white zone means being more outside, going for longer walks, meeting people, stopping and talking with them. Sardinia has succeeded in keeping the number of COVID cases below 50 for every 100,000 for almost a month. Italian regions on high alert can have over 500 cases for every 100,000. Stefania, a mother of two, lives in Carloforte on the island's western coast. She is going to her sister's home to watch the local mayor's COVID update. The measures change so quickly, nobody wants to miss his weekly speech. Dear fellow citizens, good evening. Following the latest updates from the local health authority, we acknowledge the clinical recovery of two people, but also two new positive cases. The mayor announces that Sardinia will likely become an orange risk zone, meaning bars and restaurants will close and residents can leave their towns. Being a white zone isn't a goal we've achieved by chance. It's something we worked really hard to obtain, and we should try to keep it like that. The way forward is to respect regional directives. We trust in them. Being an orange risk zone is taking a step back. We are all tired of living in such confined conditions. We feel crushed. We shop quickly and there is no possibility to meet up and chat. I don't know why this change has been so abrupt. To be honest, the cases we see on TV are far from our reality. We really have much less cases. The following day, the residents of Carloforte enjoy their last weekend in a low-risk area. The national government did confirm that Sardinia would be considered a higher risk zone. Cristiano is a restaurant owner here. He feels puzzled. Bills continue to arrive. Rent needs to be paid, so we really don't know how to proceed. This is not even the problem. The problem is how to decide what colour we are. Until yesterday, Sardinia had a 0.8% infection rate, and today we're orange. Last November, the Italian government established a flexible system of restrictions based on colours. The higher the risk, the tougher the measures, and red is the most restrictive. The colour status of every Italian region is re-evaluated every week and depends on how the pandemic evolves. Similar strategies have also been adopted by other countries like France and Spain. According to internationally renowned virologist Andrea Crisanti, this system has its flaws. What's wrong with this Italian strategy? All the strategies that have tried to control the rate of contagion, rather than trying to decrease the incidence, have caused the swing between opening and closing regions. It's a system that has proven totally inefficient. After the first Italian lockdown, we missed the occasion to set up a control and tracing system based on automatic closures and restrictions whenever a cluster emerged. There was the illusion that the emergency had gone. What we see now is the result of a series of mistakes repeated over time. More than once, the government's decisions have ignited controversy among regional authorities. Sardinia is the latest. Its local administration has chosen not to comment on Rome's decision, but the mayor of Sardinia's main city, Cagliari, in the island's southern tip, decided to speak out. We deserved to remain in the lower-risk white zone because out of 21 factors used by the government to evaluate the level of risk, 20 were under risk level. One had slightly increased the R number. I think we could have stayed at least one more week in the white zone.
Safari. Sardinia desperately needs tourists, but not the virus they might spread. Before last summer, the region was almost COVID-free, but its touristic areas became clusters in August. People fear this might happen again. We head to Olbia, Sardinia's main tourist port in the north, to test the waters there. Any passenger that doesn't have a negative COVID test or a vaccination certificate is tested on site. This system isn't a crowd pleaser. This is wrong. Like everything the government does. It needs to be organized differently. The test needs to be done before leaving. So what will happen during summer when there are expected to be more arrivals? We asked civil protection what their guidelines are. The strategy for the summer is to accept only people who have been vaccinated or who have a negative test. We won't be able to carry out thorough screening like we do now on the hundreds of passengers arriving, when there will be thousands. Will people be able to travel this summer? Not according to virologist Crisanti. He says the number of cases now is already too high, especially compared to last year's post-lockdown months. I think we need to choose three complementary strategies, vaccination, distancing and the development of surveillance and tracing systems supported by information technology and PCR tests, things we are not fully able to do now. Everyone agrees the way forward is vaccination and Europe is diving into it. Though many countries are experiencing delays due to vaccine shortages. Sardinia is at the tail end of the number of jabs administered. However, in this brand new vaccination center in Olbia, authorities are accelerating the process. We're almost in line with the program despite huge challenges. There are difficulties in recruitment, in information technology, in the supply of doses and in keeping stock for second doses. We need to keep around 30%, which means we've used 70% of the vaccines received. As vaccination rollouts accelerate around the world, the idea of a vaccine passport is gaining support. The EU Commission is expected to launch it in June, hoping it will boost the economy, which goes back to saving lives.